Hey everybody, it's Bruno from NB, where it can't all be serious. And I'm here with Jeff Applin from the uh, David Applin Group. And um, learning quite a bit, like our, our audience is learning quite a bit about the whole staffing and uh, cost of hiring. And uh, let's talk about, you know, the benefits of contracting because um, some people kind of are scared of that word and some people are unclear. Uh, number one benefit. Of, of contracting employees. Yeah, the, the, lots of benefits. I just take a step back one sec. And sure. there's just, it's such a big tr macro trend in uh, the whole labor market is the trend towards contract work, flexible workforce, um, you know, uh, project-based work, right? So this is the whole gig economy that's, mm -hmm. that's really come, come, uh, come alive. And then really the ability to work from anywhere um, really supports that mm -hmm. uh, because people can work kind of more flexible hours and all this stuff. So so the, the contract space is there. There's tons of benefits to it, but it's definitely it's a major trend uh, in the labor market on a global scale, and uh, we definitely see that for sure. But um, you, you, to answer your question uh, on the benefits, I mean one of the one of the big ones actually is just uh, the the risk that employers have um, employer risk. So mm. you know, did they do the source deductions right? Uh, um, every, all the risks that you have actually employing uh, an employee. Um, if you have a subcontract arrangement with a staffing firm, then that risk gets mitigated. And staffing firms tend to be uh, very good at that, managing those jurisdictions of employment because they're different in every province and employment standards are different and um, holiday pay and this sort of thing is, is, is managed differently depending on which jurisdiction. So it can be very technical, the, the payroll part of it, and there can be risk associated with that. So going to a specialist who can do that for you um, not only is easier, but it also mm -hmm. lowers your risk. Well, the other thing, it, I would imagine that uh, that whole co-employment co liability thing comes in if you don't need that employee for a long, long time. And, uh, um, you know, walk yeah. us through about, you know, a specific Cause... skill for a specific time. I always use the plumber example. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. do you the job, a... do this job and go. Right? And that's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So walk us through your thoughts. On yeah, that. that's a that's a good that's a clear one. Yeah. So. So yeah, like what you're, you're talking about is there, there's, um, it's a hot topic. Uh, a lot of governments are now suing larger employers uh, on exactly what you're talking about, which is the classification uh, question. Best example is uh, Uber, the rideshare company, mm -hmm. sued, or is sued by the state of California. My kids call um, me Bruber. Bruber? Because I drive them around. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so Uber, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you get yeah. them to where they need to go. Yeah. Um, do they pay you through an app? No, no, there's, there's no, no app. There's no, there's, and there's no payment. No, no. 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 Um, in fact, they're like, can I have 20 bucks for wherever I'm On going? On top or, of yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I have three kids, so I know, I know, I know the, the routine there. But um, state of California versus uh, Uber is a great example of that, where they're, they're suing, um, you know, for like a billion dollars on saying, look, all, every ride of every Uber driver ever in the state of California, state of California wants... Um, source deductions mm -hmm. for every, every bit of revenue. So they're saying you're employees, you're not contractors, and how come we're not getting paid? So it's a major, major question. And this is happening uh, globally as governments try to raise more money. Right. And, and the, the, like I said, the labor market goes more to this gig economy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there, some, of the, some of the criteria you need to be aware of is uh, things like, can you work uh, whenever and wherever you want? Um, that's, that's part of it. Can you work for multiple, um, uh, sources of income mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, which is more of a contractor characteristic than an employee characteristic. So there's, there's different filters that you can go through to say, look, I really am an independent contractor and I'm classified as an independent contractor. I have, uh, a, a, a business corporation that recognizes revenue. That's not me as an employee. It's, it's a company. Mm -hmm. And it pays GST and stuff like that. Um, so there's different things that you can do to to manage that that classification risk. Um, but for sure, like partnering with a staffing firm can go a long way uh, to make that easier and uh, more effective for a lot of large employers. Yeah, you know, you know, I always ask myself, you know, that that trial that that, that case in California, did the IRS people take an Uber 
to the court. Yeah, probably. They probably they, did. They probably did, yeah. They probably, they probably, <laughs> probably from the airport. Yeah, they probably yeah. fudged their, their tip yeah. there. Hopefully to, they didn't tell the driver what they were no, there for. No, that's yeah. right. Yeah. But uh, no, that, that's a huge thing. And the, the other thing I think that uh, contractors need to understand is that they, they have to have their own tools. They have to have their own. Yes. You know, they have to be a total arm's length. Uh, right at that and you know let's let, for the people watching out there and they kind of go yeah i'm a contractor i'm a contractor i'm a contractor i'm a contractor um walk us through what they really really need to be incorporated subcontractors uh in terms of the criteria that you know especially working with the uh, david applin group yep uh so yeah so so number one having a, a an incorporated company is it would be key right mm -hmm. off the bat um, <clears throat> the second is having insurance that, it's, it's, that covers the corporation. That so general liability. General liability, errors and emissions insurance, that kind of stuff. Uh, that business insurance that covers their corporation. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they, you know, when they get paid as a contractor, uh, then they're, they're remitting you know, GST as a business. Um, you talked about having your own tools. So for sure, anything in the trades or construction or that kind of stuff, um, that, that stuff is, is important. Um, likewise, it can be, you know, say for software development. Mm -hmm. um, often they work, work remotely, but you know, they're, they're online with their computer um, doing the work that way. Uh, those, those are all characteristics of it. And then actually working for multiple clients at the same time is, is really key. So if you have multi, like three or more uh, contracts in one year, it's going to be very difficult to say you're actually an employee and an employee and an employee because that wouldn't right. really make sense. <clears throat> well, you know what? If, if uh, somebody out there really is not clear of this, you guys aren't lawyers, but the David Applin Group uh, kind of has this all baked up. They understand their stuff. Uh, they get in touch with you on the website. Website Applin.com, A-P-L-I-N.com, mm -hmm. or give me a call, 403-261-9000. Clear across the country. Uh, eight offices, offices uh, eight offices, Halifax to Vancouver, everywhere in between. Uh. And, and you know what, for contractors out there, um, it changes a little bit province to province, but federally it's pretty much almost it's, the same, right? It's, it's pretty similar, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's, you know, the, uh, the feds, um, it, it's, the CRA guys that's are, right. are auditing you. So it's it, going to it, be pretty. It, it's, it's more CRA right, than, uh, than employee, employee risk, which is more provincial. You yeah. know, and I'm not joking around too, too much when I say this, is that you guys have it figured out. You guys are, congratulations, you were voted uh, one of the Canadians, Canada's best managed companies. Oh, the best managed companies. Yeah, oh, thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Walk, walk us Thank through you. that. Uh, like, is it like a decathlete? The... You guys have like a amazing yeah. race? <laughs> yeah, you know, I well, thanks. Um, you know, you don't think I know this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. You I did did a lot of homework, Bruno. Uh, you know, you did. It's good. Um, you know, we're I th we're proud of that, and you know, I think uh, our our people feel a lot of pride in that too, because it, that's that's um, that's a very competitive program, mm -hmm. uh, and um, they they like having been directly involved with the applications, the amount of microscope that goes over everything from your financials to your strategy to your capability. Um, to your commitment to your company, those are things they 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 go through everything with a fine tooth comb, and it's a, it's exceptionally competitive. And so to be able to uh, come out of that as as recognition, um, you know, it's it's a source of pride for for a lot of our people for sure. You know, I always have a, a picture in my mind of you know best managed companies, and you have Simon Cowell come over and kind of. You know, what do they do? Give a five? On, <laughs> you know, Canada's got management yeah. and stuff like that, but. Uh, uh, I guess what'd you guys do to celebrate all that kind of stuff? Oh, you know what? We uh, we because we're nationals, so we we have a town hall and uh, we get everybody together um, in in the boardrooms, uh, generally speaking, and uh, we we celebrate that. We there may be some bubbly uh, refreshments, there you go. Uh, depending. It might be early earlier morning in Vancouver. It might be mixed with some orange juice, but in Halifax, when it's you know five o'clock somewhere. It may be just a bubbly, bubbly refreshment, and we just give a big toast to everybody and uh, shine a spotlight on on the people that that got us there. And I've been really fortunate to work with just you know a terrific team of people. You know, and and speaking of which, um, you know, some people that know me out there, I've I've played in this in this game for a while. And what does it take uh, for people out there? They're kind of going, "Geez, I never thought of becoming a professional recruiter. What kind of money can you make?" Maybe we'll talk about that in the next episode, but. Uh, basically, sky's the limit. 
mm -hmm. in, in this in this field to to be mm -hmm. clear mm -hmm. if you're a professional recruiter but what is it that uh Call it the Applin Group is looking for best managed company in Canada. One of the best managed companies in Canada means one of your, you're one of the best recruiting companies. What do you guys look for? Yeah, yeah. You know what? We're uh, we're growing. We're definitely hiring for our internal team, and uh, you know we, we're typically looking for people that um, are really client service oriented. That are often um, you know looking for something to to, to learn. Um, I love talking to people, and uh, have a really high commitment level to their team mm -hmm. and to the outcome of that, the success of that team. And, and it's really a competitive streak to be, you know, it's very important for them to be a part of a winning team. So we're talking about contracting here and kind of the last maybe complimentary, you know, add on to that is, um, you know, we're talking about com it's complicated and, and this and that and the other thing, but if somebody doesn't have that specific experience, but is very competitive, good management acumen, business acumen, sales acumen, is that something you can oh, yeah. teach them? Absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, I was saying one of the best practices is, you know, as much as possible, hire on attitude and character, not mm -hmm. on skill or education. And uh, we definitely take take our own advice on that. When I look at, you know, some of our, our recent hires, they're, uh, they're, they're smart, they work hard, um, they're ambitious, and those are all characteristics. They're not necessarily skills, right? And uh, those, are the, those are the people that we're, we're looking to bring on board to join our team. Yeah, and you'll teach them the rest. We'll teach them the rest. We there have uh, we have what we call Applin University, and we deliver that virtually at the moment. But it's uh, it covers kind of all the different parts of the client service process, and um, they get a certificate. We have a graduation, wow. um, all that stuff. So uh, yeah, we can absolutely you know they show up with some 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 hard work, smarts, talent, um, commitment, and uh, it's be we, we, we got to be competitive. You got to want to be in it to win it, and we'll teach them the rest. That's awesome. So I'm here with Jeff. We got, uh, you know, we got another one coming up here. I don't even know what we're talking about next time, but it'll be interesting. Actually, I know what we're talking about. You got to tune in. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so again, you know, this is a couple of tricks and tips on uh, contracting from uh, the David Applin Group with Jeff, uh, Jeff Applin. So thanks again, Jeff. Thanks, Bruno. Thanks for having me. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, if you want someone you know to be our next guest, simple. Click below in the description and we'll get in touch with them. Thank you for watching and please subscribe and you'll never ever miss another episode.